I'm sure that one of the things that unites all of us is that we can all recall the law that was the law of your mother. In other words, she had a whole bunch of laws, I would say. Probably right now, you could list a few of them, the law of your mother, maybe the laws of your mother. Think about things like clean your room. It just had to be. I never understood it because it had a door. Just close it. For some reason, for mom, it's just not enough to close the door. She wants the room clean. Okay, law of the mother. Didn't make any sense, all right? How about take a bath? Uh, from early on, it was, okay, go take a bath. But I don't want to take a bath. Yep, you're going to take a bath. The law of your mother. Things like brush your teeth. Eat your broccoli. Eat whatever it is and see if you like it. I don't know if you had it, but the law at my, wa my house was you're going to try it. And so I talk about that a lot. How do you know you don't like it? But it looks terrible. It feels terrible. It smells terrible. Whatever it is, okay, close your eyes, use a fork, and hold your nose. Takes care of all three of those, and you can still eat it. The idea is the law of your mother. Whatever it was, you make your own list. And right now, you know, some of you children right now have these words ringing in your ears. These words that you know this is what mom is doing. In fact, college students, when you get a little older, right, does the ringing ever go away? When you have your own children and you turn, ladies, to talk to your children, did the ringing ever go away? Because as you turn to give the law of as their mother, you're probably hearing the ringing of the law of your mother and you're just passing it right along. For a few minutes this morning, I want us to think about what the wise man said, he's not unwise, he's really smart. And he is talking about the law of your mother. Now, he's not talking about the laws that your mother had. Because everybody has some general laws that are the same, but specifically they are all different based on families. The text is talking about the law of your mother. For instance, we could use it this way. It is the law of the land. Without talking about what the specific thing is, the concept is the law of the land. In other words, we live in a lawful society. We live in a country based upon law, the concept of law, the idea of law. One thing in one state might say that it is not acceptable, and you go to another state, and that state says that it is acceptable. I'm not going to debate whether that's good or bad. That's just a fact. But just because one law says this is, one state says this is lawful, and another state says it is not lawful, does not mean we live in a country without law. We are a country of laws. And this is what he's saying. There is the idea of the law of your mother. In other words, by the mere fact that she is your mother, there is something that you need to understand. And in the text, be text before us of the book of Proverbs, we're going to notice six verses that help us to define the law of your mother. Just looking at the Proverbs and the various things that were said about the law of your mother. 
And then as we get finished with noticing these six, we're going to understand the wider implications of honoring the law of your mother. Now, if you would, I want you to get your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, and you can go in there. You might want to mark these for yourself. You might want to highlight them. You might want to go back and look. You might want to say, well, am I observing these concepts in the law of your mother? We're going to read six verses. Now, the PowerPoint has it set up as a plaque of honor. It is as though that the Proverbs have set up a plaque. And in the plaque, it is called the law of your mother. And the various plates that we're going to put on it are these six scriptures to define for us what he is talking about. When he opened the Proverbs and he says to honor the law of your mother. Turn, if you will, beginning in chapter 23 and verse 25. Let your father and your mother be glad. Let her who bore you rejoice. The first thing about the law of your mother is this. The day that you were born, the day that we were born, was the greatest and worst day of her life. Because, think about it, for the rest of your life you hear things like, I bore you. I brought you into this world. And I'm telling you it wasn't fun. And you're talking to me like that. And I went through all of that for you. We hear it the rest of the time, right? And then it becomes a proverb of sorts. We use it in other ways. Well, that's as painful as childbirth. It's rough. And all of us who have experienced it secondhand, we know how rough it is. But it was also the day of the greatest joy. It's the day, one of the days that mothers mark. That's why we have birthdays. Because that day was a day of joy. No matter how life goes with you, no matter how well your life goes or how rough your life goes, more than likely, you are in a crowd of people who can say that your mother had great joy because you came into this world. It is not the case that every child brings a mother joy all the days of his or her life. Nobody does that. But in a general way, that's what they say. It is a time of great joy. Now notice how the proverb writer put it. He said, let her who bore you rejoice. In other words, continue to allow her to rejoice. Live in such a way that she will be able to rejoice all of the time. The law of your mother is this. You can bring great joy to the heart of your mother as you live the way that you ought to live. Christian mothers should expect that their children live in a Christian way. And so we go back to the, one of the very first things you learn in young Bible classes. When they talk about the word joy, a Christian mother can always have joy for the rest of her life 
in the lives of her children if they are able to give her joy by having Jesus first, others second, and yourself third. Joy. Jesus, others, yourself. A Christian mother will be joyful the rest of her life and take great joy in her children if they see their children putting Jesus first. And you put Jesus first in your life. That's the law of your mother. I hope that is the law that she laid down with you. I hope that is the example she set. And I hope that if it is not, that you break the cycle, Mom, and you tell your children to put Jesus first. And when you put others second, in other words, I care about people. I, I want to be involved in their lives. By and large, we think of Mom and we think of one who serves and helps and is always involved in doing things for you wouldn't that also translate to a great joy when her children are doing things for others? And when you look back at your family, in a well-oiled and run family, do you recall your mom putting herself last? She took care of everybody else. She made sure everybody else was doing well. And that example of Jesus, others, and yourself will give your mother great joy the rest of her life. That's a part of the law of your mother. Therefore, the idea is that you can help your mother be joyous. It is responsibility that you have Therefore, the Proverbs writer said, let her experience joy. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 11. There is a generation that curses his father and does not bless its mother. He's speaking now in a concept of a generation. I think that's fascinating. Because he's talking about the concept of changing how you honor or feel about mom and dad. In any society, any generation that does not honor father and mother is a generation that is on the road to complete destruction. Notice what he says. He says, you don't bless your mother. Have you ever been out somewhere and you've seen a child abusing his or her mother? Maybe they're yelling at them. Maybe they're hitting them. Maybe they are running away and they're acting in ways absolutely to abuse a mom. And how did it make you feel? What was your first reaction? Didn't you just want to jerk that child up around the shoulders and say, listen to me. That's your mother. It's interesting to me that in a public setting, the one thing that you're not allowed to do is to say something bad about somebody's mother. You can say something bad about dad all day long. They're not going to say anything to you. Don't you say that about my mother. But you say it about your dad. Don't care. That's my mother. You've heard that. You know what I'm talking about. That's because we have something here about it. And that's what he's saying. The generation that finally gets to the point where they don't bless their mother. How?
how low have they gone? Here's what he's saying. Your mother blessed you. Make a list sometime. Make a list right now mentally of all the things and the ways in which your mother has blessed your life. Just list them. Think about it right now. How your life is what it is because of something or things that your mother has done. You think about it. That list is getting longer, isn't it? Therefore, you bless your mother. That's the law of your mother. The law of your mother is this. She blessed you. You bless her. And you bless her by continuing in the generations that follow those good and wonderful traits that resided in her. The law of your mother. You bless her because she blessed you. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. How many times have you observed when the news reports by video, the cameras are there, and this person is convicted of a crime, and mother is standing there, and they show her watching. They might even interview her. She never is able to detach from that child. Doesn't matter what the child has done. Doesn't matter how in the adult years this child has turned out. It doesn't matter. And yet, even though she cannot detach, is there anything more sorrowful than watching a mother have to deal with something like that? the conflicting emotions that are inside. She certainly does not approve of what her son or daughter has done. I certainly don't support that, she might say, but that's my child. Those who do not bless mom become a grief. To mom. And you may have heard the statement, it sent her to an early grave. Mother's bond is so close that we can mess up and grieve her till the day she dies. How many times? Maybe have you even heard, as I have, at the end of one's life, one mother says, all I want is for my children to be a certain way. Maybe it's to get along with each other. Maybe it's to find their place in life. Maybe it is to fix their relationships. But whatever it is, don't grieve your mother, don't be a burden to her. Don't live in such a way that she will be grieved continually. She is your mother. Chapter 4, verse 3. In the middle, just the first part of this, is a phrase that doesn't end the sentence, but we're just going to look at a piece of it. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, 
mom can pick you out of a crowd, right? I loved, I love the illustration that you've heard many times, I'm sure. And the illustration is this. The high school band is performing on Friday night on the football field, and mom is so proud, and she looks out there at her child, her son, and she says, wow, look at my son. He's the only one marching in step. That fits. I have been with parents when their children, their sons are playing football or their children are in the band, and I say, which one is yours? That's one right there. But they all have helmets on. They all have hats on. They're all in uniforms. I can't pick them out. Mom picks them out. Mom can pick you out of a crowd. Oh, that's wonderful. That's also not so wonderful. Have you ever felt the eyes of mom on the back of your head? She can pick you out of a crowd. She knows that you are either in step or out of step. She can pick you out of a crowd. The wise man said, I was the only one in my mother's eyes. There is nobody better. If you're a doctor, you're the best one. If you're a lawyer, you're the best one. If you're a teacher, you're the best one. If you're picking up trash, you're the best one, the only one. The law of your mother is this. Since she can pick you out of a crowd, live in such a way that she's not picking you out for something bad, but rather elevating you for something good as a pride, as a source of being proud, not arrogant, but proud of you as a person. That's the law of your mother. The final one is chapter 23 and verse 22. Listen to your father who begot you. Do not despise your mother when she is old. The Jewish leaders had created a system by which they convinced the Jewish people that you don't have to care for your parents when they are old. There was this set of money and you could, as it were, be saving up this money to take care of your parents. But if you then say it's Corbin, that means I've dedicated it to the use of God. Then you don't have to care for them. You can just let them have all kinds of problems because you've released yourself from that, op that obligation. You know, the whole attitude behind trying to create a way to get out of taking care of your parents makes no sense. Mom spent all those years when you couldn't do anything and she gave her all. And in those years when she needs you because she can't do anything, you need to give her your all. You better understand that as mom gets older, the law of your mother is as she took care of you, you take care of her. Now, these six things from the wise man are the six facets that he gives us to define the law of your mother. But we are here today to honor God. And you know how we do that? By honoring everything that God teaches. And one of those things that we need to understand is this. If we cannot honor the law of your mother, you cannot honor God. In fact, as Paul wrote it in Ephesians chapter 6, he wrote to children. And he said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. I don't know 
really everything he means there, but here's one thing I think he means. In the list of the Ten Commandments, we finally get to the one that says to honor your parents. It's the first one that has a promise connected to it. In Exodus 20, it says, Honor your father and mother, that it may be well with you, and you may live long in the land to which you are going. Of all the things that God told the Jews to do, when he said, I'm taking you to this brand new land, I'm going to give it to you, all the things that he said and all the things he demanded and all the things he expected and how many times he took them out of the land and caused other nations to come in. Do you know what the very first thing was connected to living in that land? Honoring your parents. Because that's where it begins. You know, don't you? You see children who are abusive and dishonoring of their parents. Don't you know that it looks to you like they're on a track? to cause problems in society at large? Isn't that the case? Isn't it at home that we learn how to be disciplined? Isn't it at home that we learn how to have relationships? Isn't it at home that we learn how to be submissive and to obey? That's where we learn all these things. And if you can't do that to the parent, how can you do it in society at large? If you can't honor your parents when they are honorable, how can you honor people in a society and live in a society in an honorable way? People with whom you don't have any connection. You see, the law of your mother is not only important for you and her. It is also important for us and the society at large. It's important for us and our relationship to God. If you can't honor your mother, you can't have a proper relationship to God. Today, some of you are here because mom said, it's Mother's Day. Please come and be with me in worship. Some of people who are usually here are doing the exact same thing somewhere else with their mothers because that's something we do and we understand it. Please come because we get it. I understand it. And when you leave today, most everybody is going to say, hey, we, let's take mom to lunch. You've already figured out where you're going and what you're going to do. Late this evening, we're going to honor moms here and have a meal prepared for them. Why? It's just a good practice. It helps us to be the people we ought to be. But never forget, there's a bigger picture here. And the picture is, if you can't honor your mother, you cannot honor God. Because God is the one who put you in that family. Who created the family structure. So today, sure, honor your mom. Think about how you're doing and how you can do better. But more importantly, think about how you are honoring God as you honor mom. And in so doing, it'll make you what God wants you to be. So today, just as children are born into a physical family, 
to become part of that family where we learn those things and we do those things, you need to be a part of God's spiritual family where you can learn things and do things and become what God wants you to be. Born into the family, as Jesus said, born again of the water and the spirit. When you are baptized into the family of God, it is the spiritual birth process. You're born into the family. Rising from the waters of baptism, a brand new life, child of God, innocent, ready to begin, on the road, trying to learn and do and be. Just like children stray away and head down paths that parents and moms don't like, Sometimes spiritual children do the same thing. This would be a good day to honor God by coming back and being a part of his family again. Can we help you today? If you'll come as we stand and sing. We